Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here, and today we're going to be working with the IPC communication module inside of Electron to actually communicate between the renderer process and the um, main process. So, let's get started. Now, firstly, let's show what we have currently in our app so far. We have this um, showing our current CPU model and the amount of cores we have available. And in the renderer process, we're just displaying that information. And in the main process, we are actually creating the window and nothing else has changed. Now for this application, um, we're gonna install one package and that is called system information. It's just so that way we can actually get more in depth information on our system, like the current usage. You can see things like battery life, things like that. Um, so we're going to do npm install system information. So I'm going to copy that, come back over to my text editor and type in npm install system information. And once that is installed, I'm going to clear the console and do npm start. Actually, I'll postpone that for a second. Um, in the index.js file, I will require it, so I'm going to do const si for system information is equal to require system information. Perfect. And just like that, we are done. Now, in the render process, I want to update the CPU usage every, let's just say, two seconds. So every two seconds, I want to show the new CPU usage. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to create const CPU usage is equal to documents dot get element by ID usage. I think that's what I called it. Oh, I called it CPU dash usage. Ah, there we go. Bad variable names. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm just going to put this in a set interval for every one. Actually, I'll do it for 1.5 seconds. And every 1.5 seconds, I want, um, which I'll do like every two, two seconds, sounds good. I want to get the CPU usage. Now, to do that, um, we're gonna use, I'm gonna show you how to communicate between this process, which has access to the CPU information, and this process, because we could just require this up here and then actually use it, but um, we need to. We don't want to bog down this render process with a whole bunch of stuff. So, because it'll make the user experience less smooth and fluid. So, let's handle that. And to do that, we're going to use IPC communication. So, in the main process, we're going to also require IPC main. And what this is is it's a module that comes with Electron that allows us to listen for messages between these processes. So the first parameter when we're listening dot on is the message or the channel. So we're going to listen to a channel which we're going to call um, get CPU usage. And here we have access to the event and the arguments. Okay. Now the event is basically how we can reply, so we can actually reply back to the sender. Um, and the arguments are any arguments passed in through the render process. And I can show an example of that. So um, I will do console.log args. Perfect. And in the render process, we're also going to require, we're going to do const, I'm going to use destructuring again, IPC render is equal to require electron and in here we can now communicate between the main process so in a render process we have IPC render and in a main process we have IPC main so to actually communicate um, we could say something like IPC render dot send and let's send a message that matches this because remember this is the channel so it comes in two parts, the channel, like the header of the message, and the actual data. So the channel is get CPU usage. And the data 
Um, we're just gonna say hello. Actually, we'll put it. it come, you can put it in an array because um, that's usually how you want to do it. So hello. We'll just uh, hello from the render process, and just like that. Uh, if we actually start this up, what you will see is, okay, hello from the render process. And we're getting this every two seconds. And I'll actually console.log it in here too. CPU stats. So if we actually show in here, every two seconds, we're sending a message from here from this process to this process. Because as you can tell, we're console.logging in here and in here. In this process is console.logging to the actual like process running on our machine. In this process right here is running in the browser. So to communicate, we have to use IPC MAME and IPC render. So I am now going to come in here and reply to the renderer process with the CPU steps. So I'm going to say si dots, and here are all of the um, all the methods that that module allows us to use. And I think what we want is current load. There we go. Current load. Si dot current load, and this is a promise. So we're going to do dot then. We have data and dot catch. And we have an error. So if there's an error, I'm going to console.log it. And with this data, what we want to do, because again, this data is going to contain all of this right here. So this is all the data that we're going to get back right here. We're going to get CPU used for each user um, for every single core on our system and all that kind of stuff, user, system, and the full load. Uh, also the timings. So we want to get this in the renderer process so we could actually show our CPU usage as a percentage. So let's do that. Inside the index, we're going to reply. And to do that, we do events dot sender okay, dot send. And this will send a message back to just the sender. If we want to say send a message to all of the processes, like say we have a whole bunch of windows open, we'll use event.reply. But we want to get just the sender and send them a message. The channel is going to be um, updated CPU stats. And the data, or any arguments we're going to send back, we're just going to send back the data. And just like that, we should now be sending back the data inside our render process or um, to our renderer process. And what we're going to do down here is also listen for that. So IPC render dot on. We're going to listen for the updated CPU stats on that channel, and we're going to listen for the event and the data or args. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and here. I'm just going to console.log the data for now. And just like that. Oh, yeah. And let me also console.log the, um, in here, the argument so you can kind of see that we can send bidirectional uh, data. Oh, my. So if I restart this, we will see in here we are getting all of our CPU data back. So this is all the stuff pertaining to the CPU, the cores, the actual usage in percentages. And in here, we're getting hello from the renderer process every single time um, we run this, because that is what we passed in as an argument. We can also pass in multiple arguments, such as true, we could pass in like a date, dot now, you know, things like that. And what you'll see, is I think this has to be in an array format. There we go. If I rerun this, npm starts, we are now getting hello from the renderer process, true, and the current date timestamp. So we can send multiple pieces of data. Uh, it just has to be in an array format. So I'm just going to right now send true, 
sense. You have to send something. Well, you could send an empty array, but I'm just going to put that. Perfect. And lastly, starts. we could, let's actually update the CPU usage percentage to show the correct data. And conveniently, we have that right here. The current load is 10.1%. And we'll actually um, verify that that's correct using Task Manager. So, on the end render process, when we get the new current load, we're going to go CPU usage dot enter text is equal to CPU usage current load and we're going to do data dot current load and we're going to pass in the percentage sign and just like that it should now be showing the percentage inner text of null CPU usage CPU dash usage I typed that incorrectly. Ah, it is CPU dash used. Aha, aha, aha. There we go. Okay, and it shows the current CPU usage. It's a huge decimal, so I'm going to just um, to fix. And I'm going to make it at most one decimal place. And we can see our current CPU usage is about 8%. 8.7 and let's actually verify that with the task manager and we can see that our CPU right here is hovering around 8, 6, 7, 9, sadly they're not in sync this updates a lot more frequently but it looks like they're very similar right now um, and that's because we're using this module we're also updating it every two seconds but yeah you can kind of see how right here we're able to communicate between the main process which is this process right here and we're able to send messages back and forth uh, one last thing I'll actually show is if say we want to send just one message like just once and we want to do IPC renderer dot once so instead of doing IPC render dot on and listening for the message, you can do dot once and we'll do first first message. And this message will get called and then after this gets called, it'll actually get rid of this event listener. So if we ran this here and we said we wanted to listen to it once, there should be an error getting popped up pretty soon. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's just gonna happen. So right here, see what happens when we run this once. Okay, we get the one call, 13.2%, and it's gonna stay like that because this listens once and then it removes. But if we have it on, so if we listen multiple times, it'll keep updating and all as well. So that is all for today's episode on IPC communication. Uh, in the next episode, we will continue diving into Electron and all of the available modules to continue building out our system information app. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.